Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend that he can't move in with me after five months? I have been dating my boyfriend for about five months now. I own my home as I purchased it this February and it is my second home. I made a good amount on my first home and put most of that money towards this house. I have a good career making about 80k and my mortgage is $1,500. My boyfriend rents a room from his friend who owns a townhouse. His friend travels a lot for work and is hardly ever home. Maybe one week out of the month or so. My boyfriend pays $800 a month, which includes utilities. It's a nice place and my boyfriend makes good money as well, probably around 60-70k. So recently, his friend was thinking about selling his townhouse and just moving in with his girlfriend. He told my boyfriend this, who then came over one night and sort of sprung all of it on me and told me that he should move in with me. I was really shocked as we have only been dating for 5 months and I really don't think that is long enough time for me to think about letting him move in. I tried talking about it with him and told him I needed some time to think it over. He was visibly annoyed, but let it go. So yesterday, I got a text from him stating that his friend plans to list his townhouse in October and my boyfriend needs to be out by the end of October. My boyfriend doesn't have a lease or anything, but he texted me and said he needs to move in with me short term as that's not enough time to find an apartment. I texted him back and said we could talk that night. When he came over last night, he was ranting slash begging me to let him move in. About how he didn't make enough money to get an apartment, and that it would just be less stressful for him to move in with me. That if he could help pay half then it would be good for me too. I shut down that idea and told him we have not been together long enough for me to want to take that step. He got upset and called me heartless, and then left. He texted me. Today and apologized, but still asked that I think about it a few more days. I told my friend and co-worker today about everything, and he said that I'm an a-hole for not letting him move in. I was really shocked, but my co-worker kept going, saying that in this economy people can't afford to live by themselves and that five months is long enough to move in together. I didn't say anything, but just remained quiet. So am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend that he can't move in with me? Go to part 2. Am I the a-hole for telling my boyfriend that he can't move in with me after 5 months? My coworker surprised me this morning when I came in. He had coffee and a sandwich sitting on my desk. He was waiting for me and said he was an idiot and that he was sorry. He said he went home and told his girlfriend that he knew he upset me. His girlfriend chastised him and told him he was in the wrong. They talked about it, and she told him that my boyfriend is an adult and that he needs to act like it. As for my boyfriend, he texted me this morning and asked if he could call me at lunch. I said that was fine, and then I stepped out at lunch to take his call. I started talking first and told him that he cannot move in with me. I explained that we are not at that stage yet where I feel comfortable having him move in. I told him I would help him look for an apartment, help him pack and move, and help with anything else he needed, but I was firm on it. He was quiet for a while, and then he told me that he can't afford an apartment on his salary. This didn't make sense to me. As far as I knew, my boyfriend didn't have any outrageous debt and he has a good salary. He's an account manager, and he told me a while back that he makes less than 75k. He also drives an older car so no car payment, and he got a scholarship to play baseball in college. So I asked him how he couldn't afford an apartment. He spent about 5 minutes talking about how he has other bills to pay and that eating out daily was getting expensive. My boyfriend does not cook. His job has a cafeteria, so he eats breakfast and lunch there and orders food every night for dinner. This was my only concern in the 5 months we have been dating. He talked for a little bit more and every time I asked him a question about it, the responses were vague. I even asked him if he has a lot of credit card debt or something, but things were just not adding up. Finally, though, he told me that he lied. He only received a partial scholarship to play baseball, and he has an embarrassing amount of student loans. My boyfriend went to an expensive private college, so I can only guess how much that cost. I was pretty shocked, but things started to click into place. He talked a little more about how he really can't afford a higher rent payment than what he is paying now. I did ask how much and if he was paying on them now, but he said sort of. He maxed out the total for federal loans, but he also has a lot of private loans. He's paying on the private ones currently, but not the federal ones. He said everything kind of came crashing down on him at once as the payment pause ends in October, and his friend wants him out of the townhouse. I told him it was a lot to take in, but that it still wouldn't change my mind about him moving in. He said he understood, but he wanted me to come over for dinner tonight and talk more about everything in our relationship. He said he didn't want to lose me over this, but he did tell me he was hurt that I wasn't ready to take the next step. I told him we will talk later and hung up. Now, I have a few hours before our dinner, but I am on the fence on breaking up with him. I feel like I got some of the information, but not everything. I thought about it all afternoon and realized that I need to hear him out, but also see how he plans to move forward. He is not moving in with him. Part of the reason I felt so strongly against it is because I felt like he only wanted to move in because it would save him money, and not because he cared for our relationship. I make a comfortable salary and can pay my bills. I have student loans, but a reasonable amount and I live within my means. I have no car loans or credit card debt. I worked hard for what I have, and I want a partner who wants to work towards a future together, and not one where they rely solely on me to pay for them without putting in the same amount of effort. I cannot tell if my boyfriend wants to make this. 
relationship work because he cares about us, or if he just sees an easy option for his financial problems. I will hear him out tonight and make my decision then. I have not experienced any other red flags or behavior from him, but I am much more cautious now and will listen to what and how he speaks tonight. Update 2 I ended up breaking up with my boyfriend. It basically came down to the simple fact that he did not want to move in to further our relationship. He only wanted to move in because he wanted to save money, and he hoped that I would help him by letting him move in and lowering his bills and rent, so he could pay off his debts. To be completely honest, the whole thing made me feel so gross. I started to question why he was even dating me and at that point, I knew it was over. My ex surprisingly took the breakup well. No fighting or begging me to change my mind. We went our separate ways, but neither one of us blocked the other on social media. Yesterday, my ex posted that he was in a new relationship and that they were moving in together. I really don't want to think about anything relating to our relationship, and I ended up blocking him on everything for peace of mind. I'm not ready to start dating just yet, but spending time with my friends and family and hoping to enjoy the fall weather. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom I am never coming back to her horrible house? My mom and dad are divorced, my mom has remarried and has three stepchildren, while my dad is still single and I live with him. I see my mom on some weekends, but I don't spend the night at her house because I like to spend the weekend with my friends. So I spent the summer with my mom. I didn't want to, but she has been telling me how she misses me and how she is going to make sure I have a good time. I said yes because she is my mom, plus she had been practically begging, making it hard to say no. The whole time I was at her house, I just wanted to go home. Instead of everyone washing their own plate, we all take rotations, so I am left washing like 15 plates every other day because they serve food family style and there are so many chores. My mom didn't even let me meet friends all that much. And there was constant noise while at my dad's house he makes me food, and I wash the plate for the two of us. He allowed me to bring friends over, and me and him clean the house together, but since we are two people, the house is never that dirty to begin with. My dad let me talk to him informally, if I asked my mom what up, her husband would go into a rant about how I shouldn't talk to her like that, and I was left babysitting a lot there. Me and my dad eat out every Sunday, like we go to a nice restaurant and try different cuisine. While here to eat out, we all have to beg my mom and husband. And if I am feeling sad, my dad always takes me for a walk or to go get some food. If I am sad here, nobody notices it, like I am not seen here. I just miss my dad and never want to return here. My mom is sad I am leaving and said we should do it again for every holiday. My dad is picking me up today because I start school on Wednesday, and I said that I was never coming back here and went to pack all of my things. My mom's husband decided to come and give me a speech about how I shouldn't say stuff. Like this, and this just made me not want to come back here again because why does she always report me to her husband when I told her that in private? I told my dad what I said, and he said I don't have to come back if I don't want to, but my response was a bit harsh. Was I being an a-hole? Edit, I am not cutting off my mom, I meant I am never sleeping at her house ever again. I said it harshly because I wanted her to know there was no room for debate. I didn't want to spend summer here but she kept pressuring me to come and making me feel guilty because I don't live with her. I wanted her to know straight off the bat that I am not repeating this experience. Go to part 2. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom I am never coming back to her horrible house? My dad and my mom have been divorced since I was 5 and my mom has lived with my grandparents for as long as I can remember. She didn't move out until she married her creep of a husband. My mom has always had me on weekends, but most of those weekends I remember spending them with my grandparents and cousins. My mom hasn't always really been there because she was working. So some people have been asking me for an update. Me and my mom still aren't close. I made it clear to her that I am never visiting her home and that I still hope we could hang out outside of her home because I didn't like the way I was being treated, and she said okay but proceeded to say that it's not my fault my dad spoiled me but she will respect my decision, whatever that's supposed to mean, but I have been calling and texting her every week to hang out, but she always declines. I think she is holding a grudge, but if she doesn't want to put any effort into our relationship, neither will I this is just how she is, she says she is not angry but does passive-aggressive stuff. Anyways, I asked my mom, or more like begged her, and I got a sleepover with her husband's daughter, Amy. Me and Amy have been begging for it for like two weeks. So she came to my house, and we had a lot of fun. Her dad didn't give her any money, so my dad bought her a couple things from Claire plus some Auntie Anne's and food from the food court, but there was a deal at Claire, so everything he brought her didn't even reach like $20. It was just some earrings, a bracelet, and a diary. And in my house, I have like three big trash bags full of clothes that I was going to let my cousins go through because some of my cousins give me their clothes, so it's a thing in my family where we give each other clothes that are too small or we are not going to wear anymore. I was going to give them away or DIY them and try some TikTok trends. When Amy saw the clothes and I told her I was giving them out, she asked if she could have some. So me and her went through Pinterest, and I dressed her up with style and packed the clothes she liked in one big trash bag to take home. It didn't really occur to me that this would cause issues. But when my mom picked her up Sunday, she didn't have any problems, she said that it was nice that I gave her clothes. But later in the evening, her husband called my dad and was yapping about how we gave his daughter our old clothes and started saying that we looked down on them. It caused so much drama. 
This morning he came and dropped off the Claire stuff that my dad bought for her and the trash bag of clothes I gave her. I texted her and told her I would give her back Claire stuff on Tuesday because her school is like an 11 minute bus ride from my school. But I am not sure if we are going to be allowed to hang out again. My boyfriend's attempt at playing hero nearly got us unalived. My boyfriend is a big hero fanatic and does everything in his power to be like one. It's really endearing and it's one of the many things I love about him, because he wants to be the good he wishes to see in the world. But this mindset he has is why we are fighting right now. We've been quarantined at my apartment and he suggested we go on a night walk since we've been getting stir crazy from being inside all day. He figured that it'd be better for social distance to go out at night. I was hesitant because we live in a bad neighborhood, but he assured me he'd protect me. On our walk, we were cornered by a man with a knife that demanded our wallets. I remembered John Mulaney's street smarts. Bit from the Netflix show and was going to throw my wallet past the mugger so we could run away, but my boyfriend started arguing with him and was spouting off a bunch of stuff about justice and how the mugger wuldnt at away yth his. It looked like he was getting ready to fight. I was taken aback by this, and I guess the mugger was too, because it gave me enough time to take the important stuff out of my wallet while he was distracted. I interrupted my boyfriend's monologue and said take it, just don't hurt us and threw it behind the guy. When he turned, I grabbed my boyfriend's hand and we booked it back to the apartment. We got home safely, and I was relieved that we were okay, but my boyfriend was fuming. He was pissed that I interrupted him from protecting me when he could have, in his words, clearly handled it himself. I told him he could have gotten himself unalived. He said that he was obviously stronger than the mugger and would have won. I explained to him that the guy had a weapon and my boyfriend didn't, so the odds were stacked against him. Not only that, but I didn't want my boyfriend to get unalived over a damn wallet. We argued for longer than necessary, so I shut it down and told him. We could talk about it when our adrenaline wasn't so high, but I needed to file a police report while the event was fresh. He stomped off to our room while I called the cops. When I was off the phone, I went to lay with him but he rolled away from me. The next day, he was still angry, and had already told his friends and family about what had happened to us. I thought that they would be understanding about how I handled it, but they were mad at me for not letting him have his opportunity to be a hero. His mom even ridiculed me for emasculating him. I want to reopen the conversation so we can understand each other and move past it, but if he isn't receptive, I'm going to ask him to move back in with his mom. I want to understand where I went wrong if I went wrong, but honestly, I feel like he's being childish and unreasonable. I just want to know if I was the a-hole, or is he? Go to part 2. My boyfriend's attempt at playing hero nearly got us unalived. My boyfriend called me last night and I answered. He asked if I was okay and how I was doing. Then he asked if he could come over and I said he could. I planned on bringing everything up again myself because he had been very passive-aggressive and refusing to talk about it, but when he showed up, he immediately started apologizing. He was saying that he was being delusional, unrealistic, the whole hero fantasy isn't healthy, he jeopardized my safety and that wasn't okay. I wasn't prepared for this behavior, especially compared to how he'd been acting all week. We talked for hours before we went to bed together and everything seemed like it worked out fine. I was really on the verge of ending things, so it was a relief I didn't have to at that moment. Then this morning came and poop hit the fan. I texted my friend that things worked out, and they said something along the lines of I'm so glad you were able to apologize, hmm. Some people mentioned that maybe he told a different story, which isn't something I looked into. But I decided to ask, and who oh boy, I'm glad I did. Firstly, he told everyone that the night walk was my idea. Then, apparently, we were never mugged. Nope. Apparently I just started talking poop to a stranger on the street in an attempt to make him show he was a strong man and protect me. And the only reason we were able to get away was because he de-escalated the situation, and that it was emasculating because he was put in a position where he felt like he was forced to fight for my honor. Are you effing kidding me? When I confronted him about it, he tried to play dumb and backpedal on it. When I pressed him to be honest, he snapped again, and said, what was I supposed to say? The whole situation was embarrassing, and it was going to make me look bad. We argued again for a bit, but I was just done. I told him to go and that it wasn't gonna work. He didn't have much stuff so it was easy to put in a spare grocery bag and just toss at him while he angrily left. He's currently outside of my complex waiting for mommy to pick him up. As far as I'm concerned, I dodged a bullet. F his friends, F his mom, and F him. Ada for removing my daughter from her bed at 3 a.m.? My daughter has been having a sleep regression issue for the last six-ish months. She gets up two to five times a night. Almost every single time she tells my husband and I that she wants us to physically tuck her back in. She shares a room with two of her three siblings. Whenever my husband gets up with her, the behavior gets more frequent. In my eyes this is because he goes all in. Doing things like singing to her, cuddling her, talking to her, instead of placing her back in bed and going back to sleep. She basically gets a ton of attention with him at night and it makes her get up more. I've tried to explain this to him but he dismisses it, so I usually get up with her to try to curb the behavior by giving minimal feedback and just putting her back in bed. My daughter came to me at almost 3 a.m. and asked me to cover her back up. I was admittedly short and irritated. I took her back to her room and told her she is a big enough girl to cover herself with blankets. 
We practiced this and talked about it so it wasn't like I was expecting her to do it herself out of the blue. She refused. So I told her good night. She began full on screaming at the top of her lungs and crying. I tell her that I'm going to count to three and she can either stop screaming or we can go downstairs. At this point she's woken her siblings and I'm trying to contain the situation. I count to three she's screaming more. I lift her out of bed and lead her by the hand to the stairs. At this point my husband is up. He tells me he can handle it. I tell him I'm taking her downstairs to talk to her and to keep her from screaming where everyone sleeps. He tells me to stop. I tell him he's undermining me and to back off. He does step aside but follows me downstairs and is cooing to her the whole time and bringing her water. I repeat that I can handle it and to please leave us to talk. He refuses. I do manage to talk to my daughter, explain that she can't. Scream like that and that she needs to be a big girl and cover herself with her blankets at night. My husband hovers over my shoulder. I take her back to bed, she covers herself up, and we leave the room. He immediately turns to me and tells me that I was abusing our daughter. That I can't convince him that what I was doing wasn't abuse. I try to explain but he ignores me and marches downstairs to the couch. I try to talk to him again and he just insists that I'm abusing our daughter. I was admittedly short with her but besides leading her downstairs by the hand I did not touch her and I don't feel I was overly mean in trying to enforce her tucking herself in when she finds herself uncovered in the middle of the night. So, Ada? Introverts who found a way to enjoy socializing, how did you do it? Me being introverted stemmed from the rigorous bullying I received throughout high school. I was the weird kid rocking the bowl cut and discussing anime in class. My bullying was never physical, thankfully, and other people were bullied way worse. This one kid got tied up in a bathroom and nutted on by a senior student. Anyway, once I left high school, I was left with no social skills, and became very introverted. In college, I found a few people who shared interests with me, and I was never really a loner. However, I really really wanted a girlfriend, but knew literally no females. I still had my V card at this point, had kissed one girl, and my most recent form of female touch was getting a hug off my younger sister when I left the house to live alone in a college dorm. In said dorm, there were two other guys. Alex and Brad. They were the cool type, I saw them bringing chicks home at least once a month, sometimes even twice, and I actually got on well with them. We were not super close at the start, but they would say hi to me, or share their gummy bears with me. Over time we got closer somehow. The first time I tried grass was actually with them, I had too much, half of a whole J, and ended up throwing up. About halfway into my freshman year of college, I was pretty good acquaintances with them. They would tell me about their night out when they came home drunk. One time, Alex brought home an absolute beluga and banged her on the dorm couch. I walked into the kitchen in the morning to see them draped on the couch, unclothed, and sweating while asleep, with Alex's body fluid staining the couch. I didn't eat breakfast that morning. Either way, a month ago, I opened up to them about my struggles with girls and how much I envied them and their good looks. Then Alex and Brad told me a secret. It's not all about looks, says Brad. I thought, easy for you to say Brad, you're 6 foot 2 200 pounds with a 6 pack. Brad went on to tell me that looks are only part of the equation, but the most important part is how you carry yourself, how you present yourself, and your energy levels and vibes. He says when talking to a girl, you have to be energetic and confident in yourself, how great your hair looks or how smooth your answers are, are only part of it. I was fascinated hearing this. So you're telling me, if I carry myself with confidence, engage in conversations, slip in a joke or two, and present good vibes, girls will like me? Exactly, my boy, they replied in unison, which was kind of strange. I didn't really believe them, it was so bizarre. Either way, we all went out the next night. This appearing confident thing was way harder than it sounded. I stumbled over my speech and talked to a whopping total of one girl, who turned me down immediately. Alex and Brad went home with a girl each. I figured socializing wasn't for me, they just lied to me. Then Alex and Brad convinced me to go out again. They said the first experience will never be good and I should give it time and keep at it. The next time we went out, they gave me an energy strip to eat. They said they put it on their tongue before going out to just raise their energy and make them more confident. What harm could it cause? I looked at the packaging. Become limitless by elevate strips. Heck yeah, I'll be limitless, I thought to myself, scoffing. But, when I was in the club, I felt a weird sort of, fluidity, to my body. I had energy, heaps of energy that I needed to release. I started dancing, buying beers, and talking to people. It was working, my high energy approach to picking up girls was working. I met a girl named Stacy, and we chatted for a while. I invited her to dance with me, and she accepted. We then exchanged numbers. While dancing with Stacy, I caught a glimpse of Alex and Brad staring at me, smiling at me, and dapping each other up. It was a true bro moment. I didn't go home with Stacy that night, she said she wanted to take it slow. But it turns out we have many interests in common and are now in a talking stage. Yesterday, she asked to be exclusive. Edit, I just lost my V-card to Stacy. Edit 2, my PP was itchy, and I went to get tested. Stacy gave me the clap. I hate life. I invited 15 of my closest friends to my birthday party, but they didn't even reply to the invite. I feel so ashamed I made a WhatsApp group and invited 15 of my closest friends to my birthday party. I planned a nice themed dinner, the theme was Italy slash Dolce Vita, at a nice restaurant, with one live music act, a nice cake ordered from a bakery and fitting the theme, and decorations. I wrote a heartfelt text, how I want to celebrate getting older with my oldest and greatest friends and I detailed everything that was planned for the evening in the invitation. And then. Nothing.
Nobody replied, nobody said a word, like thanks for the invite or looking forward or anything at all. After a few hours my boyfriend posted a party meme in the WhatsApp group and wrote how excited he was, to get it started. Still nothing. After almost two days, I posted a gif of chirping grills and made a funny comment, still thinking, maybe people simply forgot to reply. After another day, I started texting people individually, if they would like to come, or if they are available that evening, and a few responded that they will let me know soon. Others didn't respond at all. After almost a week, not a single one of my friends posted in the group or have messaged me if they would like to come to my birthday party. After zero invitation acceptances and after reaching out several times, I felt so ashamed. Like I was begging the people to want to celebrate me or to come. I started to cry and I felt so depressed. Ashamed and humiliated, I just deleted the WhatsApp group. Nobody has asked me about that either. My birthday is now just a week away. I called the restaurant and cancelled, I called the bakery and cancelled my order, and I returned the decorations I bought. Maybe I was the stupid one for organizing all those things beforehand, but I was just so sure that at least a handful of people would like to come, show up. I am just so sad. I have known most of my friends for at least 15 years. I was their bridesmaids, their child's godparent, their maid of honor. I was there at graduation ceremonies and birthday celebrations. And I am truly puzzled. Is it really such a burden to come to my dinner? A dinner, which I would have paid in full and which I tried to make into a beautiful evening slash event for everyone. I am just so sad and ashamed that I wasn't even worth a reply message. My boyfriend is trying to cheer me up and he immediately got busy organizing a surprise birthday evening for me. He is wonderful and I am just so glad he and my parents care so much about me, otherwise I would just feel absolutely worthless.